everyone to Motec's latest webinar, which is how to wire PDM battery isolation. What we're going to talk about in this webinar is how you set up battery isolators for race cars and how that works with the new Motec power distribution modules. We're going to discuss what the problem is with alternators and battery isolation. We're just going to discuss a bit more detail about PDM isolation itself and then PDM manager settings. In the picture you can see in front of you, you can see the common methods of battery isolation. One of them is the big red key and the other one is a newer method which is an electrical isolator. We'll go through both methods during the webinar. Okay, so what we'll talk about first of all is battery isolation in race car in more general terms. So commonly in most national racing class regulations, whether it be car, truck, bike, boat or whatever, it is your regulation that goes along this line. And I'll read you out what is the common regulation within Australia. It says, vehicles must be equipped with a battery isolation master switch which isolates the battery and stops the engine. It shall be capable of being operated by the driver in his normal seated position and there must be a second switch or a remote means of operating the main switch from the vicinity of the A pillar on the driver's side. So the basic idea is that from within the car you must be able to turn something which isolates the battery from the rest of the car and outside of the car there must be another way that somebody can turn the power off to the car. Obviously this is important in an accident where you may not be conscious driver may not be conscious or you may not be able to get to that part of the car to turn the power off to the battery. You'll want to turn the power off to the battery to stop things sparking obviously in the engine bay and the possibility of causing a fire. So you need a way of turning the power off or isolating the battery from the driver's seat and from outside in case a fire marshal or another marshal has to actually get to it. So the general requirement means that your vehicle must be capable of removing all electrical power from the harness, sensors, alternators, coils, injectors from either of the two isolator switches. Obviously that doesn't mean you have to have both of them switched off. Any of them should be able to isolate them by itself. One switch must be accessible from the inside, from the driver, and the other from the outside of the car. Often, especially in older cars, a remote cable is used. So you use a cable like a bike um, brake cable and you have a loop on the outside and you pull the loop and it pulls just the one red key from the inside of the car and turns the car off using that method. That method is good in that it allows just one isolator to do the whole job. Um, remote switches, as I mentioned, are typically operated from outside the car via a pull cord. The new electric isolators allow for toggle switches instead of a big red keys. So you can have just a normal everyday toggle switch on the inside of the car and a normal toggle switch on the outside of the car. If either of them are in the off position, the car will be considered to be isolated. Now, one of the main problems with, with uh, isolation or battery isolation is that alternators will stop the isolation from actually working. So if you look at the wiring diagram that I've got for you at the bottom there, you'll see that we've got a battery here and here we've got a single pole isolator, normal isolator. On the other side of the isolator, this is where the vehicle power goes, this is where the starter motor is, and this is where the alternator is. So when this isolator right here is closed, the battery power will go through and the vehicle will have power, the starter motor will have power, the alternator will have power. But down here, this is the engine and the engine will run without any problems. As soon as you turn the isolator off over here, the battery is no longer connected to the rest of the vehicle power. So in theory you would expect that the car would turn off. But that's obviously not what's going to happen. The alternator over here is going to continue to charge because the engine's running. So it's going to power the vehicle here and continue to make the engine run. So even though this isolator over here is switched off, the vehicle still has power and so it will continue to run. So your isolator isn't actually going to stop the engine. It's going to disconnect the battery from the car, but the car's engine will not actually stop. This is a very common mistake made when people wire up isolators into race cars. 
If you were to go and use a MoTeC power distribution module such as the one over here, this does not fix the problem with having a single pole isolator. The power distribution module will be powered up via the battery normally, but when the isolator is off, the alternator will actually be the one that powers the PDM. So even with the PDM, your vehicle still won't turn off if you have it wired in this mode. To fully isolate the vehicle, you need to use a multipole isolator switch. That's what I'm going to show you next. All right, so in this method, I'm going to show you with how to set up a multipole isolator switch with a big red key. So we're assuming you've just got one single big red key style uh, master switch and you're using a remote pull cable to the outside of the car. So for your isolator to work correctly, it needs to perform two functions. It needs to first isolate the battery from the rest of the vehicle. The second thing it needs to do is ensure that the engine stops running. Once both of those things have happened, then your car will be correctly isolated and it will be a legal method of isolating the car. Both of these functions can easily be achieved with a multipole isolator and a PDM when you wire them as shown in the diagram below. So the difference between the previous drawing and this one is that we've added another red wire here that goes from the battery up to one of the second set of contacts on the isolator switch. What you then do, you have the isolator switch on the other side of these contacts go into the power distribution module onto an input pin. When you set it up in this way, the power distribution module is able to see the, power, the isolator is open because there is no power coming into this input pin. It also knows when the isolator is closed because there is power coming on this input pin. So now the power distribution knows the position of the isolator. So we'll go through the process of what would be happening. You have the car switched on, so the isolator shown with the green arrow is closed and there is power flowing through the red line into the power distribution module. And there's also power flowing through the rest of the wiring to the starter motor from the alternator into the PDM, out to the lights, other devices, ECU, data logger, and all the other things. Somebody comes along and they turn the big red key. So that turns the battery off. The battery is no longer connected to the rest of the car over here. But what's going to happen is, as discussed before, the alternator is going to continue to feed power back through this wire, back down this way, and into the power distribution module. The power distribution module is just going to keep powered up and it's going to keep powering all these devices. But what we've done is we've added another wire here into the input pin of the PDM. So the PDM will see because that particular wire is not connected to the alternator, it will see the voltage disappear on this particular input pin. And what is most common is you can actually set the PDM up to say, if there is no voltage on this particular wire, I want you to turn my coils off. So all of a sudden, there's going to be no power going down to the coils. So with no power going to the coils, the engine will stop. And when the engine stops, the alternator will stop creating any more power. So therefore, the battery will be isolated here and the alternator will stop because the engine stopped. So that's a method by which you have one switch. As you turn the switch off, it stops the engine from running, which stops the alternator, and the battery is also isolated. So how would you configure that with a multipole switch within the PDM? Well, you wire the isolate trigger into your PDM, as you'll see in this input pin properties right here. I've got this particular isolator wire wired into pin 16, and I've just said, I want you to call it master switch. I want it to be active when, the, when it is low polarity, and this is my voltage triggers to go above and below 4.2 and 3.6 volts. So now that I've set it up like that, this over here is my ignition output setup. So this is the power that's going to run the coils, and the coils, of course, are going to run the engine. And I've said to it, I want this particular output to have power when the ignition switch is on, and the master switch is on. So you can see it's ignition switch true and master switch true. 
So you have to have both of them to be true. So if I turn off the ignition switch, the coils are going to have no power. Or if I turn off the isolator, and therefore the master switch over here will say, oh, I'm no longer true. So when master switch becomes false, there's no more power to the coils and the engine will turn off. So that was a nice straightforward method. That's actually one of the most common methods that people will use to isolate um, an engine. This is a newer method and it is quite a nice neat method by which you don't actually have to have one of those big red keys and you don't have to have a cable running through your car. You can use these items called high current relays. Over here on the right, that is a picture of a Tyco high current relay. This method means you can have a much nicer, neater solution to your battery isolation. This particular relay can handle up to 130 amps continuous and there are different relays with different power, um, power figures. Now the connector here on the bottom left, that is where you actually control this relay. When you actually have 12 volts going across this relay through to ground, it will switch the relay on and there will be power available between these two poles. When you have these, this where 12 volts doesn't go to ground, these two will be disconnected, very much like any other relay. So I'll show you a wiring diagram on how you're going to set up one of these Tyco or other brand solid, st uh, not solid state, just normal high current relays. So with this wiring diagram, you can see up here, there is that high current relay from Tyco that I've just been talking about. So you can see the battery cable goes along here and goes into this, which is one of the main lugs on the Tyco relay. We've also jumped off the wire going to that particular lug and we've gone into the switch side. Now the switch side again is here, it's the connector. So we actually have a lead that comes from here and just goes around and goes up here and into there. So just a, a wire that jumps across from one to the other like that. That will power up this side of the coil. And on the other side of the coil, we run a wire which goes all the way along and down to ground at the end. But what we've done in here is I've put a switch here. Now this is the switch that's in the cabin that the driver has access to. And you can see a picture of this switch over here. So it's just a normal everyday toggle switch. When that toggle switch is closed, the power will go across here and go towards ground. When it's open, there will be no way for the power to get to ground. We also have an external switch. So these are just run in series with each other. This over here is a picture of the external master switch. So this is actually how you would isolate the car from the outside of the car or where a marshal would actually turn the car off. If this switch over here is in the off position, it doesn't matter what position this one's in, the car will be isolated. And in this instance, we've got a little battery triangle to say this is where the power switch is located on the car. Okay, so that's the cabin switch and that's the external switch. So these two switches, when either of them is in the off position or the open position, the relay is going to know that it cannot get to ground and so therefore it's going to open up this circuit there. So the power that was coming from the battery then going into everything else is now going to be switched off. But keep in mind we've got that exact same problem again where the alternator is still going to power up the car. So how do we, even with this method, how do we stop the alternator from powering up the car? Well, basically, we use the similar method to what we used before. I take the wire from here, which is on the switch side of the coil relay. I run that wire down and into the power distribution module, just like I did last time. Again, I set up an input pin on the PDM that says when this power is, when this is showing power, I want the power distribution module to work and I want it to allow power through to all the things, including the coils. When it is, there is no power, 
I don't want it to actually allow any of the coils to get power and that will shut the engine off. So using this method, you can have an internal switch and an external switch and have the power distribution module turn off the engine and have an electric relay turning the main power on and off to all of the devices. This is how newer cars are getting built nowadays rather than having the big red isolator key. And this is how you would set up the power distribution module for high current relays. So again, it's the same setup where we would say that input pin 16 is going to be reading that wire coming off the right hand side of the relay. When that switch says it's true, coils are going to have power. When it is false, coils will not have power. Obviously, with the method that I've shown you before on the previous screen, it depends whether both switches are in the on position. So you will only see power at the coils when both switches are in the on position. If either switch is in the off position, there won't be any power at the coils because this master switch will drop to false and false in the master switch channel will make this no longer be true. So the ignition output will go to false and the coils will no longer have power to them anymore. The final thing I'm going to talk to you about is power distribution module setup. You can actually do a little bit more in your power distribution module to make sure that everything else turns off straight away as soon as you flick the isolator off. As you can see in the example below, this is showing my power distribution module set up for all of my outputs, that is wipers, indicators, headlights, fuel pumps, etc, etc. And added to every single line in this power in the power distribution module setup, I've added this extra bit, master switch equals true, master switch equals true. It is in all of the statements. So by adding this to every single statement, what will happen is as soon as master switch becomes false, power will be taken away from every single item within the vehicle, even while the coils and the engine is still, st are still t turned on and running. So the engine will turn off as soon as the coils lose power, but some of the other items will turn off a little bit sooner by setting this up. It's just an extra safety feature to make sure that everything turns off as soon as the master switch turns off. It's not a necessity, but it's just a bit of a nicety. So thank you for attending the webinar on how to wire PDM battery isolation. It can be tricky and sometimes you only find out once you've finished all your wiring that you've wired it the wrong way. I hope it's been helpful and hopefully your PDM, PDM installation will go better knowing it. Thank you.